Hello, welcome to another episode of What Are You Selling? With me today is the um, well-established fantasy indie author, Andy Pelliquin, all the way from Canada. Thank you for coming on to the show. Well, thanks so much for having me. The, you know, the, the, the journey time from Canada was so extensive, so it's, it's nice to be able to do this. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Because you're on the, the far side of Canada as well. Yeah, West Coast, British Columbia. I mean, it's this little tiny, not, not a tiny town. It's a little city in sort of like dead center of British Columbia. I'm like, I, I sometimes, uh, I, I've never been to Canada, but I would I would love to go. And obviously I live in Ireland. Um, so there's quite a lot of, especially on the east side, and there's quite a lot of Irish communities. And everything, but I sometimes just look at the map of Canada. I just think, how, how is it so big? Yeah, it's it's just this massive country here. People are like, oh, you know, we've we're taking a short weekend trip. You know, we're driving eight hours for an overnight trip. For me, it's just because I was born in Japan. You know, it's a small right. island too. So you know, when you when you travel somewhere like we had to travel far to get to Tokyo, and that was a four hour trip. Here, people are like, oh yeah, I'm just popping down to Vancouver for the day. It's a four and a half hour drive. Just like blows my mind. But that's just what the people here do. So yeah, you know, it's it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking to um, uh, I was talking to someone who is from um, Ontario, and they were going on on vacation to the beach, and they're like, "Yeah, it's just a, it's just like you know a, a quick two and a half hour drive, so it's all, it's pretty local, really." And I was like, "I could literally drive across the other side of the country in two and a half hours." <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you get used to, or I I feel like people who live here long enough, you kind of get used to the distances. You learn how to fill up the time you know like when my wife and i travel we've got audiobooks we've got podcasts we've got stand-up comedy obviously i sit and listen to her talk for a couple of hours <laughs> you know but but you know you learn to do that but yeah it's super weird to go these massive long-haul trips that's something that really only happens like in the states and canada where there's just so much space yeah 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 um so um Obviously, um, it's first time on, on the show. Um, I, I I know you. I've, I've, I've kind of we've spoken a few times, and um, I know your work. I'm currently reading uh, Our Blade Assassin as well, which we'll come back to. So, why don't you just tell everyone who's kind of watching a little bit about you, like how you got into uh, fantasy, like you watch your inspirations, and and, and and like what kind of fantasy is it that you write? Yeah, so I kind of just started writing because one day. Um, I was bored. <laughs> I, I was about 15, 16 years old. This was sort of the days before the internet was everywhere, you know, dial up or the phone. Those were kind of the options. And so obviously the, I couldn't really have access to the internet. So I had Microsoft Word and Microsoft Paint. And if you have ever seen any sort of artistic thing that I've created, you know immediately that I made the right choice. <laughs> so I basically just sat down and started hammering out just the world's crappiest sort of amalgamation of Fast and Furious, James Bond, uh, uh, Jason Bourne and you know just like a, just a total piece of garbage but it was like okay I had so much fun while I was doing it so then I kind of got into it a bit more and I, I wrote you know short stories pieces satire um, just general prose stuff until I was about 19 and then life got in the way took me other places but there was this one piece that I'd written one Halloween night I woke up at like two o'clock in the morning couldn't sleep I just wrote this this super like dark like a horror piece basically uh just super dark ambiance everything about it it was you know it was sort of like a halloween's night inspiration and so a friend of mine read that and she was like hey i want to turn this into a comic book i was like oh okay well i wrote this when i was 19 i was about 25 at the time i wonder what i could do now with so many more years of experience you know life experience you know six years not a ton but you know when you're when you're 25 six years feels like a lot of experience yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's so then i started run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I started writing a graphic novel script, just kind of your your standard Dungeons and Dragons world, you know, elves, dwarves, humans, monsters, um, but real like 300 meets the chain of dogs from Malazan. I loved that. I think I just read the Malazan book and that gruesome torturous drag out scene basically of through the entire book of these guys marching towards damnation just totally resonated yeah. with me yeah, so i wrote I, yeah that with dead house gates like i i am um, geez I, I i remember reading the first miles on book garden that gardens of the moon and thinking yeah this is this is a well after after kind of getting getting into the speed of it after getting thrown into like the opening kind of battle yeah. and it's been, i thought this is good I, I'm, this is familiar a little bit i, I can see where it's going and what have you? Then I read the second one, and I was like, "My God, I did not expect 
and he's just like, so dark and it's like like just that 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 moment of hope where he's like within sight of his destination and then it crumbles like i had never had that experience on that level before and it just blew my mind to see what this author had done he had spent thousands of words uh, probably hundreds of pages by that time building up this moment and then just crushing your soul and it was like that's who i want to be that's the kind of author i want to be so so i kind of just write that sort of the the epic very epic feel but very very dark i like to to dance along the underbelly of society I, you know playing with criminals and you know they have they have all, all all the fun anyways in fantasy world you know no need to follow you know the rules set by the king or you know the knightly code of honor it's just sort of survival of the fittest it's a fun gray area to play in and so playing with that with the with some horror elements like mm -hmm. demons and monsters and a lot of really hor like horror themes um yeah. a lot of stuff happens at night obviously that's where the assassinations take place <laughs> yes, yeah, but yeah. i i write dark epic fantasy cool and um, like um so but what what before you discovered like i mean because Gr grimdark i mean um there is an element. I, I mean, from what I've read of your work, there is an element of grimdark in there. Quite, and there's obviously the, the the military aspects of it as well is 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 quite there as well. But as a term, grimdark is only quite new. Although, like if you go back to sort of like Thomas Covenant and stuff like that, they that was I'd say that was grimdark. But um, you know, before you kind of discovered the subgenre of it, what was it? What were you reading when you were when you were re when you were writing your James Bond Fast and the Furious mashups and? Well, you know, whatever I could get my hands on at the time. Um, Chronicles of Narnia was probably my first exposure to fantasy. And that just blew my mind that, oh my, oh my God, there's this whole other world that's not this world. They exist. Like it was the first time that I had really ever conceived of the notion of a secondary world you know like i'd read sherlock holmes was my favorite book and then there was tarzan of the apes and even john carter of mars which i fell in love with immediately you know that sword and science vibe it's still earth mars but then with chronicles of narnia it's like earth and then totally different world yeah. it was like i could do something like i can take things to a totally different world and people will read it yes yeah yeah that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, like, I've got all these. I've got all these books, but no one, no one's ever read any of them. That's that's like exactly. that's, that's like living in my house. I'm like, you know, you know, I have these <laughs> books, and, and my wife is like, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too, so I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, and my son is the, he's only a toddler, but he loves trains. And every time I like, I have a new book and I, and I show it to him, and he's like, "Is there any trains in it?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> so, well. Not interested. That's the key. Next time there's going to be trains. Somehow. Exactly. There you go. Immediate <laughs> fan base. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so you have you you're very to say you you are prolific would probably be an understatement. <laughs> Thank you. When when did um when did your first um book come out and how many um, books have you brought out since then? So the first book, actually, the first book that I that I put out was the original incarnation of what is now assassin uh yeah. it was released as blade of the destroyer in 2015 i believe yeah 2015 and it took me about six months to write that thing because it was originally a graphic novel script and then the uh, i decided to change it into a novel so i did a lot of research and spent a lot of time writing and and all of that and then since that day um i have released I think 37 books. I think I think Assassin, because Assassin is basically a reboot overhauled version of the original series. So it counts as a whole new book. I'm accounting as a whole new book. So that would be book 37. Well, yeah, it's, it's quite a bit bigger. <laughs> oh yeah, twice, twice the size. Twice the size. I think uh, Stephen King's ringing actually is he wants to know like how is it? He's like 37 in, in six years, that's quite good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just I love I love writing and I feel like it's it's sort of like my my form of therapy. Uh, it just keeps me so like emotionally grounded. So I, you know, any any turmoil that I have, it's all like on the page and then I go and get up and, you know, cook and clean and be a family man, just like super steady. So I'm happy. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that is the great thing about writing it is that you can just something that's bothering you. You can be like, right, I'm, I'm going to deal with this. Yeah, just right there on the page. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so assassin as it is now known, like I'm, I'm, I'm about, um, I'd say about seventy percent uh, through this. 
Um, so obviously it was out in a different in, uh, incarnation in 2015. And now it is like, I think that was about 350 pages. This one is pushing 800 pages. It's, it's epic. Um, so let, let, talk, talk about that a little bit, because obviously it was, it was your first release. Um, and what, what, what is it, before you kind of tell us about it, or maybe at the same time, how, what, what, what was the decision to go back to kind of revamp this? Because it is, uh, I, I actually did flick through the original version just to kind of compare the first kind of few chapters and stuff, and it is very, very different. Yeah, so so I like to say it's it's the same or it's similar in all the best ways, but a totally new reading experience. So when I first wrote the story, first book, you know, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be things that I did wrong. Um, by the time I got to the end of the series, that's book seven, was the current end. I had written another like eight books. So I, you know, books one to seven and then the other Queen of Thieves trilogy and then the Traitor's Fate, the one that connects the two. So that's about 11, 12 books. By then I had a much better handle on what it meant to tell a story, you know, pacing, flow, plot, character, development, all of that. So, you know, I, I was happy with how the Hero of Darkness series originally was. Um, and then I released it and got to, uh, the, the, the plan was originally for six books and done, you know, uh, decent sized a series in its own right. But by the time I got to book five and was starting to work on book six, I realized that there was just too much more to explore to actually stop there. So like it starts out as this really very narrow focused story of this one guy and his experiences, but slowly, you know, the world gets bigger as he goes and everything, you know, the stakes get bigger and bigger. And by the end of book six, you know, there's some big stakes that are set up, but there's also some really big personal stakes that if I ended it there, it would, it would, I felt like I needed to explore that. Um, so these big emotional things, but then also things like uh, things about religion, culture, society, um, humanity, things like that, that I could explore in future books. So I knew I needed to write more. I just didn't, you know, I had other stuff that I wanted to get to. I wanted to write the heirs of destiny, which is young adult, the silent champions, which is military. I wrote the sci-fi series Cerberus. So now was the time that I'm getting back to it, you know, after two or three years. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing that, you know, the, as with everything, you know, a book sells great in the beginning, but then sales slowly trickle off and, you know, die away into very little. So I'm like, okay, if I launched the next book in the series, what would have been book eight into this series that's not really getting much traction, mm -hmm. it's going to kind of, you know, hit dead air and not go anywhere. So, okay, what if I did something like a, like a rebranding, a relaunch, you know, put new covers? Because the in 2018, when I launched it as Hero of Darkness, photo manipulation covers, like with real life, you know, stock photography was, was fairly prevalent, you know, it was popular. Yeah. It's still done, but now it's, it's far less common. Now the best, you know, the books that sell the best and that stand out the most are the ones with that, you know, eye-catching, gorgeous, you know, uh, illustration. Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, I could relaunch it and, you know, put these new covers, really make it a great new product. But as I was, as I was thinking about it, I realized that there was a lot of mistakes, you know, first time newbie mistakes that I made in, in the original book. And so instead of releasing the same thing a third time, um, you know, with new covers and stuff, it was a good I idea to sort of overhaul it and make it a book that, Andy now of 2021 could be proud of, as opposed to Andy of 2015, who didn't really know what he was doing, kind of hammering away at his keyboard, trying to figure things out as he goes. So, so that was the intention behind doing this sort of rewrite reboot is that it's, it's a product that is, it's a story that's made based on 40 plus books of experience and, you know, eight, eight years as a writer five or six million words i'm not exactly sure you you lose count after your first few million <laughs> <laughs> sounds silly um so yeah just telling a, a story that was much more in line with who i am now as a person and who i who i can make the hunter now as a more experienced writer and and i think like having gone through the process having you know bled through that entire process i'm incredibly happy with with that decision because the hunter his world his story the emotional stakes like all of that is just is just so much better like it's a product that i would i would 
I would proudly say this is very likely my best book and will be for the next five or 10 years because of everything that I put into it. And so, mm-hmm. and, and having this re- rewritten, relaunched product means I can, you know, get the, the book two, it's going to be brand new and then three and then four. And then by the time I get to the book five, that's going to be all new stuff for people who have read my old series, the previous series. So it's just going to be, you know, the, 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 the sequential releases that hopefully keep, you know, lifting things up in the series, keep selling. And I make my bazillions of dollars, you know, for, for the rest of my life. <laughs> All the TV deals, Netflix. Exactly. Amazon, exactly. Everyone, everyone yeah, yeah, I've got great. my phone charged and ready. <laughs> that's right. It's interesting that you, um, and it's not that it's just, I think, you know, you see people release like second editions of books sometimes and, and third editions that are, if you're Raymond D. Feist, you go back in and just add like a few extra kind of paragraphs that he says, I always wanted to do these, but I never got the chance, right? Um, yeah. But a lot of those times in the second editions of whatever, it's just kind of, they'll go in and just kind of smooth the writing out a little bit. It's interesting that you've not only obviously done that, but you've expanded it so much. So that, that must have been rattling around in your head for years that you were like, oh, I wish that I had done this at the time or... or or was it more when you were working on the other books and you're kind of like, oh, that's a missed opportunity that I could have come gone and done, gone and done. You know, it actually, it actually kind of only uh, sort of came to me as I was figuring out what next. Like I was getting to the end of the Cerberus series. You know, I was writing, I think, book 10 at the time. And I'm like, I- I'm always planning ahead. So it's like, what am I going to do after this? And I had, I had been promising for about three years to my readers that I'd come back and tell the Hunter's second story arc. So yeah. I knew that, you know, it was time. It was time to get back to this to this story because it's one that, honestly, it's still my favorite story to write because it's just, you know, who doesn't love a guy who can just kill a lot of people? <laughs> and readers are there for every single one of those deaths. Like it's, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of spoiled with this character because I could basically do anything I want with him. And because of the setup, people are like, let's bring it. Um, yeah. So I, I knew I wanted to get back to him telling his story. Uh, and that's when I was sort of, sort of thinking, okay, what's the best way to do this as a business decision, as opposed to just an artistic decision? Like for me, I'm all about trying to marry the business and the art. I love the, the whole process of storytelling and being an author, but I don't love feeling like no one's ever read this, you know, like launching a book and not getting people, you know, reviews and sales. Cause those are really the only metrics that you know, that people are actually reading what you're writing. Yeah. So, so having, having, you know, enough, sales as it were proves that the book is connecting with readers people are loving it and the reviews are people saying how much they loved it or you know in the case of one or two stars you know they hated it but that's okay you know it means people are reading it um so i wanted to make sure that this was a book that that would actually do something and so as a business decision it was like okay making this book better but also longer I, I'm naturally a long-winded writer by nature. I just, I, I, you know, I was, I wrote a short story for an anthology. My limit was five to 10,000 words and I ended at 15,000. And I just, you know, it's just, it's just the way that I am. I cannot write fewer words. I'm not a very lean writer. <laughs> um, so, you know, 200,000 words is a pretty solid target for me for a decently sized book with good, you know, it's part one and part two. So you've kind of got two, halves of the same hole or two circles, you know, that open and need to be closed. Um, and two to 200,000 words felt about right. And of course, in my natural way, I went, you know, 20% longer to 240 <laughs> some thousand words, but, but it's also great because it means that each book, you know, on Kindle unlimited, it makes a greater profit too. So it yeah, makes yeah. the product much more viable um, than say a book that's 80,000 words. So it's kind of it's kind of a mix of the two things, both a business decision of I want a product that sells and an artistic decision. I can tell this story that I love and readers love so much better now. So that's kind of yeah. what drove me to do this. Cool. And were you um, obviously because you've had I mean amazing success, and we'll get to um, indie indie fantasy addicts in, in a little while. Um, but were you um, before you started kind of your writing career? Were you did you read indie fantasy? Were you aware of the indie world? at all or was it something that you just when you decided to start writing it was it something that you just got into and researched to see how you could kind of attack it yeah so i loved fantasy but i the i think you know when i started writing was 2013 and i don't think there was a whole lot in the way of indie fantasy before that i think 2014 2015 is when things really really took off 20 
10, 2012 is when a lot of people were just coming out with their first thing. So it's really right around that time that everything started to take off. But I was like, I was devouring books. Um, I was teaching English in Mexico City at the time. And I was driving four or six hours a day in traffic. Okay. Nothing to do but sit there and, you know, hate the radio, hate the traffic, or love an audio book. So I was like, you know what? I'm sitting in traffic today and I'm going to binge my way through the Belgariad or I'm going to binge my way through all of the Dritz Orton novels. You know, so I, I got so many books read that way. So it was like I loved the time that I spent in traffic because I got to read. And, and just thinking about that and thinking, man, if I could do that and give that same feeling to someone else, that would be, it would just be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. So, in in defense of the other thing, so obviously, um, all the links for uh, for Assassin will be below. Um, it's on, as you say, it's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, there is also it's on Kindle, it's on paperback, it's on hardbook. There is going to be an audio book version, I presume, at, at some point in the no. No, sadly, because um, Podium Publishing they did an audiobook version of the original series. And they weren't interested in sort of doing a re-recording and relaunch. Right, 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 yeah. So. I can't, you know, copyright. I can't do a, a version of the new one. So sadly, there will be no audiobook. But I've got lots more audiobooks to listen to. So yeah, so the, the, all those links will be below. Um, check them out. Uh, the, this, there's a lot of, of choice, a lot of different series, a lot of different types of fancy sci-fi. Uh, do check those out. The links are all below. And if this is this is the first time that you're here at this channel, please subscribe, leave us a like, leave us a comment as well. So. Down below, <laughs> Where, wherever, so, whichever direction the button's in, everywhere, every direction every, at some yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Depending on what you're watching it on, I suppose. There you um, go. So, indie fancy addicts is something that you are a are a big part of. It's a, it's um, for me as someone who's kind of a newish writer coming in and a reader as well. Because I'm, I'm a huge fantasy reader. Like it has always been. Even when I started write, uh, writing, I wasn't writing fantasy. Um, fantasy was still the stuff things that I read it was always like my thing right and then um, so the group is on Facebook um, it's, it's a very vibrant group there's a lot of people in it as well as a reader it's a, it's a great um, place to hang out as a writer it's a great place to hang out as well um, how did you kind of get involved in in, in that and um, so just tell us a little bit I mean I, from what I see it takes up a huge amount of time and obviously you, you do a lot of writing as well so I'd say that yeah those two things combined must take up a huge chunk of your week. Yeah. So indie, you know, I don't actually remember how exactly I got started as like, as a, you know, with the group, I know that um, I, you know, launching my first novels or, you know, trying to build an author presence, you know, Facebook is sort of the platform that I like and I understand best. So I would spend a lot of time on, on Facebook and I, you know, I, I've joined a number of, you know, groups for authors or groups for, for readers or fantasy groups or kind of like all these different kinds of groups, but every one of them was like, it didn't, it didn't fit me. You know, some of them were just like plagued by self promo, like everybody shared their links and that's all it was. Or it was just, you know, like a ton of like informational stuff, you know, to help authors on their career. Right. And I wasn't, I wasn't interested in that kind of stuff. I wanted a book where I could actually just find great recommendations of books or talk, talk about the books that I like, you know, the idea for me wasn't someplace I could promote my books it was more like, where is a group of people who like reading just like me? And I want to, I want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So th when I found Indie Fantasy Addicts, I was like, oh, this is, this is perfect. And I think at the time it was still a fairly small group or maybe a thousand people at most between 500 and a thousand. I don't remember. It's been, it's been a, a good few years, but I was like, all right, I love this group. So I'm going to just post here as much as I can about whatever I'm reading, you know, talk about what I'm reading. And, you know, as an indie fantasy author, you know, you, you make friends in the community. You kind of know whose books are, 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 are coming out, which ones are selling well, which ones you enjoy, which ones kind of, you know, like you kind of get to know the people around you. So it was great to, for me to be able to talk about the other books that I'd been reading, because I think at the time I was reading exclusively indie fantasy, uh, you know, just trying to get a feel for, for the other people around me, or I was doing book reviews for friends of mine, just things like that. So it was great to be able to talk and share. And then um, really the, the, the group is the the brainchild of Angel Hayes. She's been like the one who's driven that thing forward. But she asked me to come on and help sort of keep things organized. And from the beginning, I loved the, the feeling that it was all about the readers as opposed to the authors. Like it was never about, you know, a bunch of authors promoting their stuff 
to readers. It was a bunch of authors, I mean, readers talking about the books that they loved. And then occasionally there was the opportunity for authors to come in and say, hey, here's my book. So that's that's what I really liked because it was, as an author, it provided me with sort of a way to get in touch with with readers. But as a reader, it gave me this community where it, where I wasn't being, you know, assaulted all day long by yeah. buy, 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 buy links. So so that for me, it's, it's honestly the the group that I care about the most um, you know, the, the indie fantasy group that I care about the most because it's got such a great, like a, such a great culture and, and vibe to it compared to a lot of other groups where, you know, there's more promotions or there's a lot of author interviews where things that, that for me as a reader, maybe I don't connect with as much, but seeing other, you know, other readers loving a book that I loved, let's go and spend, you know, two hours talking about how awesome Dragon Mage was, or let's go talk about, you know, whatever other story. So it, it, it's great for me to connect with people that way. So when I was, when I was, able to come on board and be an admin and sort of help steer the group it's like great we're going to keep this group as focused on that as possible because that's what drew us to it and so i think that's what that's what's helped it grow so hard over the last few years i think we're now around five or six thousand members yeah yeah and it's and it's it's great i think you know we get the occasional author who comes in and you know drive by drive by promo but for the most part people are really good really civil great at keeping things um, you know, polite and just talking about what they love, which is what we all love. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing that's going on there at the moment, which is, um, which is, I, I've really, really enjoyed it because I was, I've been kind of <clears throat> in the writing pit for a little while for the, for the first part of this year. And I was kind of getting behind on stuff that I was wanting to read. Um, and so now at the moment on the, on IFA is the reading challenge for the summer uh which is it's, it's fantastic you basically just get points to read you get put into teams uh, and it can be readers and authors and, and and who and whoever and you just get points for your team for reading great books <laughs> yeah honestly this is one of angel's greatest inventions was the summer reading challenge it basically gamifies what we all love you know it makes a game out of reading right now i'm the head of a team that is dominating where the rogues and misfits and we're just we're basically just leaning into the whole thieves and assassins thing and just having fun with it you know like we've got a game running in the group where every every in my in the, the group the rogues and misfits where every book you read steals money from the king who's trying to hire knights to come and kill us all you know just just <laughs> doing fun things like that just basically taking the thing that we all love which is reading and making it even more fun and that's 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 honestly the summer reading challenge i have never read more than during this time because it's like all right i've got to actually read to contribute points to my team or else I'm dragging them down and they're all going to hate me. So yeah. it, it's really good. If, you, if you're if you sort of looking like for a community of of readers where people, where it, it's just fun to read, that, mm -hmm. that that's what Indie Fantasy Addicts is all about. Yeah, because the great thing about it is, and I know you said it before, about it is reader orientated, is that you're getting so many recommendations, not off, because obviously authors are always going to recommend their yeah. own books at the end of the day. Uh, but what's great about it, about, especially about the Summer Challenge, is that, you're having readers and authors alike reading other people's things and posting reviews for them. I think this is the great thing because everyone has to review the, the book art or just a slight yeah. little thing. And you see the cover and you see the words and you're like, and, and, it, and then you get to know people's kind of tastes as well. Like when you're in there for a while and you're like, oh yeah, I like a lot the same person that this person likes. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to check this out. Yeah, and you find you find amazing books that you never would have found otherwise because you know some some uh, some of my favorite authors they don't advertise they don't know anything about you know marketing they just write these books and they put them out there and and somehow I've stumbled across them often through indie fantasy addicts and it's like I loved this book I loved this series so I'm gonna read it and you know it's 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 an amazing place to discover new indie authors mm -hmm. fantasy authors. Um, without it being you know just this deluge of links and promotions and all of that yeah yeah so um for yourself obviously what is what is next on on your you said before how you're always thinking ahead what is um what's the rest of 2021 looking like for you okay so the rest of 2021 i've just released dark blade one dark blade two is with the editor i'm working on dark blade three now that's probably going to take me a couple of months 
it's going to be about 250,000 words. I just know it. It's at 150 now, but I got to, I got to add more and it's going to be easily another hundred thousand. Um, dark blade four shouldn't need too much more work than what's already been done. So I'm right. Uh, I think I'm going to try to write the first book in a series. That's basically dress the legend from, from Gemmel's works, mm-hmm. but with like a Waylander style backstory. I literally just finished listening to, to, to all of Gemmel's books. Um, I think last, month I, I did like a, a binge listen I, for the first time actually I'd never listened to his stuff before which is weird considering how iconic he is but it was like all right I'm gonna listen to him and I loved just the flavor of his world and his characters and all of that so for me the idea I, I I'm, I'm a big guy I'm six and a half feet tall two meters so the idea of a big guy I always love I always love writing big characters so writing this seven foot axe man but with this sort of darker backstory, it's exactly the kind of character that, that I, that, that I love to write. So I'm super excited. I wrote the first chapter for it sort of like this, this just total um, bloody massacre as the opening. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of setting up his backstory and stuff. So I'm, I'm excited. I wrote that post it in my reader group. I want to at least try to write the first book by the end of the year. Cause it's just such a great story. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It sounds great. And it's funny with it's funny with Gemmel because I'm I was the same because I, I was well there was I was reading lots of different kind of fancy and knew of Gemmel and obviously the the award that they, they had and all that kind of stuff and everything. I was like, I'll get to him at some point in the future. Yeah. Like he's there, I'll get to him. And it was like probably I probably wasn't until my late twenties when I first picked him up and I'd read like, you know, all the wheel of time um malazan up until the point where it was out and all that kind of stuff and it was like i'll i'll, I'll give him I'll, I'll get it's finally it's time and then i was like why did i not read this 10 years yeah ago? yeah no every time i talk about you know badass assassin waylanders come up um every time i talk about just badasses in general dross has come up so i've i've been hearing these two names literally since i had started being an author in fact someone actually read the the early incarnation it was like wow i loved the real gemmel feel you know the he reminds me so much of waylander so i was like awesome compliment i didn't know how much of a compliment it was <laughs> until i just went and listened to all of the waylander books and the dress books and i was like man i've got to do something like this so i'm i'm excited to get to that series because just those those books just like blew my mind yeah excellent oh good luck with them so um and the I'll say all your links will be below but where for anyone that's watching where is the best place to kind of interact with you and come and say hello when a month they've read your your work to come and say how good it is what's the best place to, to find you yeah so just i think facebook's where i spend the most of my time so my author page is andy peliquin um i have my andy peliquin's literary legionnaires it's a group of, of people who've read my books and we just have fun hang out talk fantasy and of course indie fantasy addicts but you know or or shoot me an email through my website andypeliquin.com that's kind of the way that i communicate with people i'm really easy to to reach well thanks for giving me some of your time anyway i know that you're very very busy and good luck with the writing for the rest of the the rest of the year and please do get around to your new idea because it sounds awesome thank you